Today your life is going to change because you're going to start learning how to make websites in Hugo. <laughs> um, so Hugo is basically the best of both worlds. It's written in Go, it's highly minimalistic, it's fast, it's sleek, but at the same time it's so extensible. You can add so much of what you want, customize it, and, and really do very unique things. So unique that you will have your clients saying, I can't believe it's not a dynamic site. Uh, I've used Hugo off and on for years, but this year I really sat down and kind of figured it out. It clicked, and the goal of this video and the other videos I'll be doing on Hugo is to make it click for you. Um, Hugo is a little bit, like, it's super easy to use, super easy to play around with and add stuff on, but when you first get started, it's a little confusing. And I'll explain why in a second, but... Um, we are gonna, we're gonna learn Hugo. That, that's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna waste too much time. I'm gonna assume you're a smart boy. You know how to install a, a program. I'm not gonna spend five minutes telling you how to install it. You know how to do it. I expect that that is, so install Hugo. And the tricky thing, um, the tricky thing with, uh, Hugo, okay, is that it's hard to get started because it's like a chicken and the egg problem. In order to get a site, you know, up and running, you need a theme in Hugo, otherwise it, nothing shows up. You need templates, you need a couple of these things, and in order to set those up, you kind of already have to know about Hugo. So it's like you can't really learn about it until you set things up, you can't set things up before you know about it, well, anyway. So what I've done here is I've made basically a bare minimum theme. There are a couple other things in here, but the objective of this video is we're gonna use the theme that I've created and I'm going to make you understand how to create your own theme. And mind you, this isn't a theme in terms of like color or anything like that. It's basically just templates for generating a website. And this is going to be a diving board for doing whatever you want. And I'm going to show you, this is going to be partially a showcase, partially me showing you how Hugo works on the back end. Um, because once, once you get going with it, I mean, creating a site is just creating markdown files. It's super easy. Like there's, it's not even worth a video. So go to github.com slash lukesmithxyz slash lugo, L-U-G-O, Luke and Hugo at the same time. Um, and that is the little theme, the little template set that we're going to be using. I have actually directions here for setting it up if you don't know anything about Hugo. I'm going to assume you already have Hugo installed, but because I've talked long enough, you already have it on your computer. So to create a site, as I say here, all you have to do is say Hugo new site. Wow, very intuitive. And just give it give it any directory name. It doesn't matter. Let's say, I don't know, site new. Or I don't know. I guess I say on the website, new site, right? So that's going to output some text. We don't need to read that because we're watching the video. So that's unimportant. Um, but I'm going to go into that new site. And you can go ahead and type ls to see what it generates. And by the end of this video, you're going to have a good idea about eh, maybe more than half of what all these things are. Um, config, you can probably already guess, that is the configuration file for your site. Okay, so you can go in there, you can go ahead and edit it. Let's say I want to change the title to Based Hugo Site. Doesn't matter what it is, right? You can set system settings there, like site-wide settings there. Um, and themes, this is where we're going to want to put this theme so we can download it and actually like get a website going. So uh, you can just copy this clone command if you so desire, but you can just clone this repository into themes Lugo. Okay, this is going to take one second, and you will see in that themes directory we now have the Lugo theme installed. In order to activate that, we actually have to go back to that config file and say theme Lugo. Okay, so that is actually going to turn it on for our site. Uh, you could just run this echo command to echo it there, but whatever, your pick. And last but not least, uh, we are going to want to go ahead and copy the example CSS file um, from the theme to the website. Now the website is already going to be using all the files in the theme, but you're going to want to customize that stuff, including the CSS, so you might as well copy it um, to this uh, directory. Okay, and that actually, we copied it, so let's actually look at our directories again. We haven't even started playing with the site, but you should already know what some things are. Config is a config file. Themes is where you put themes, and we basically don't need to touch it anymore. It's done with. Static is um, static is where you put all the files that are not like web pages, okay? So the two directories you're going to be using for making websites the most are probably content and static. 
Now content is basically where you put markdown files. We're gonna create those in just a second, but what Hugo is gonna do is it's gonna take those markdown files, which represent every page on your website. You're gonna have one page for all the pages you want. And Hugo is going to generate HTML from that and it's gonna create a new web directory from that, right? And it's also going to take the additional stuff. So content is just for markdown files and other things you're, at, hypothetically, if you have other things Hugo is acting on. But uh, all static files obviously are going in the static directory. So that includes the CSS file that we've just moved over. If you wanna add images in there, you're gonna put images in there, right? Uh, or, you know, documents you want people to download or anything else, anything else, right? So we know what content is, we know what static is, we know what themes are, we know what con uh, config is. Uh, now public is an empty directory. And how this works is if you just run Hugo in your site, you're gonna get the, basically Hugo just, if you run the Hugo command with no options in a direct a website, it is going to generate that site and it's gonna put it into the public directory, okay? So you can actually go in, we, we can actually open up, you know, see our index file here, our index HTML. Actually, we can open this, right? Um, now it's not, oh, I shouldn't say, I should say it's not gonna, it's gonna be as if you're exporting it to a website, so it's not gonna appear um, how it should. But thankfully, Hugo has this nice little command, right? This very nice feature. I'm gonna open up another terminal. If you run Hugo serve or server, it's actually not picky about the spelling. Hugo has a real time generating example of your website. So here's what it looks like. You see it's entitled based Hugo site because we changed it in config, right? Um, but this Hugo server command, what it does is as you change the, the, if you add stuff to static or config or you add pages or you change other variables, uh, it will change this as well. So I can say my homepage, my homepage, or maybe, you know, my website, because it's really the website title. And that will actually edit the site. So that's what this Hugo server command does. And when you're, as you're configuring a site, you're basically always gonna have this running in the background. It's very lightweight. It just checks to see if there's a file updated and it updates everything. So this is what our website is gonna look like now. But what, just again, what, just to be clear, when you're done editing it and you wanna put it on a server, you know, you just run Hugo and that goes to the public directory and then you upload that public directory to your server or, you know, do whatever you want. Okay, so that's super basics. Um, so I'm gonna run the Hugo server command and I will say I usually run it, I have an alias, actually I wanna say HSS, right? Um, I usually run Hugo with this extra option, the Hugo server command, uh, with this extra option called no HTTP cache. And that's just because when you're updating files very quickly, um, by default, Hugo will like keep a cache of it. So if you update a file, it might not actually update in your preview, stuff like that. So anyway, I'm just gonna run it with that. Now I'm gonna put that on another workspace and we're just gonna start editing this website and do some, do some stuff with it. Okay, so um, as we said before, there is the Hugo new site command, which creates a new website, but you can also just create a new file. Okay, so we can say uh, new, let's say about.md. Okay, so what that does is it creates a file in content called about MD. And we can open that up, edit about MD. And so this is basically, this is a markdown file. This is how all the, the pages on your website, the, the content pages are going to be generated, right? So here is some content. And of course, uh, this is markdown. This is all in markdown which is much easier to modify than HTML, of course. So you can have a list item, you can have more lists, you can have a uh, you know, dictionary uh, with uh, you know, dictionary definitions, uh, you can have numbered lists, blah, 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 right? So once you have your file and you save it, you'll also wanna get rid of this, you can either replace draft true with draft false, or you can just get rid of the line. And you'll see that it will pop up. You will see your page has popped up on our web page, and we can click on that, and we can see. Look at that. We have all the website content that you know we want. Um, 
So I will note, uh, just go ahead and you've probably noticed on these pages already, um, uh, I do have some extra stuff here. I have a little link to the RSS feed, which is, my, mind you, automatically generated by Hugo. And I'll show you the file that does that uh, later on, but it automatically generates an RSS feed for everything on your website. And additionally, it, it, in the footer, it puts like a the URL of your website. Now, of course, it's appearing as localhost, but if you actually put it on a website, if you compiled it, it'll have your website URL. But of course, even aside from that, you can. I'm going to show you how to change the footer and all that kind of stuff. This is just I'm just telling you to notice things. Um, but the important thing is, we can create any content we want in Markdown files, and of course, you can also do things like tags. So let's say we want to tag this with, uh, it's an update, so I'm going to tag it with updates, and we're going to say, I don't know, personal, I don't know, whatever. You can tag it with many different things. And notice also when we tag articles in Hugo, um, uh, well, using the, con the theme that I am, I've provided to you, and again, I'll show you how it does this in a second, um, it actually generate it gives you a list of all the tags at the bottom. And if you click on them, you will see, actually sometimes it takes some time. Actually, let me refresh this. It has some trouble when you first create tag files. I don't know why. But if you click on one of these, it is going to create this tags, um, basically a file for the tag itself. Now let me explain uh, just so we, let's make some more, um, let's make some more uh, pages just so we can see exactly what that's doing. So let's make a new page called um, um, autobiography.md. And so I am going to edit that in the, it's in the content directory, right? So we're gonna say, it's not a draft, and we're gonna say, this is my auto bio. And I'm also gonna tag this with uh, personal, okay? Personal. It goes without saying that you can see that the tags are tag. You know they got uh, uh, quotation marks and they're in a, a, a what's a, a set. What would you call that? And it depends on the language, I guess. Um, so either way, we can see now that the if we click on personal, this is really a tag page that is listing out every article that is tagged with that. Okay, and this is something that Hugo does automatically. This is one of the nice little things about Hugo. Um, so that's what it does automatically. And you'll also see this other thing. So I said my Hugo theme will automatically put this stuff down here. And of course you can style it to make pretty, make it look pretty yourself. But additionally, it will create next and previous uh, article links. So if you have a blog that's you know putting out more articles as days go on, you can have links that go directly to the previous ones. Okay, so one more thing I wanna show you um, before we uh, do some really fancy stuff. You'll also see, so we know, let's, let's look at these directories again. So we know the config file, we know where themes go there. We know static is for like CSS, like basically all the files that aren't marked down and the markdown files go in content. Um, let's talk about archetype. Oh, and public is where you export the, the site to. Um, archetypes, let's open that up. And if you look in there, you'll see a file that looks like this. Now this default.md, this is the, if you use Hugo new, this is the template for what it creates. So let's say hypothetically, I don't want it to create new articles and make them drafts. I can just get rid of this line, right? That's no problem. Um, and notice also, this is actually the first time you're looking at like Hugo's dip, you know, special functions. Uh, here uh, in title, it has a function that is basically taking the name of the file uh, and uh, replacing the hyphens in the file name with spaces and then running it through this title command, which actually just smartly guesses what should be capitalized or not. Uh, that's all that does. So whenever we run, let's run that again. Now note, I changed that. I got rid of the draft thing. Uh, and I'm actually gonna go to the main page here. Let's go to the home page. Um, so now I've changed that and let's make a new page. Hugo new, um, new blog post dot MD. Okay, so let's look once again at the page that has now been created in content. And you'll see firstly, again, Hugo smartly guessed the title name based on the file name. If it didn't guess right, you can change it, but you know, it puts spaces in there and it capitalizes stuff. Um, and in this case, it didn't have drafts, so it actually automatically appeared in here once it was created. And we can say, uh, here is my new blog post, okay? So, um, and that's basically how it works, okay? That's how you create markdown files. So most of managing a Hugo site, Okay, I will say, and in, in content, 
Um, I'm putting everything in, in the directory itself, but you can also make subdirectories if you want. That That's totally fine. If you feel like uh, you want some special blog posts, and let's say we'll have content, and then we'll have, you know, blog, um, you can move, let's say, the new blog post to content blog, right? So you can move that in there, and that still, that still works. And you see your page here actually generates this special post for the blogs directory, right? It all depends on how you want to like manage things, how you want things to display. Um, and it all kind of depends on your personal preferences, but you can have subfolders to content and you can have separate rules. Actually, let me show you what I do on my personal website right now. I don't know if I'll keep it like this, but this is just to give you an example. Um, so I have, if you go to lukesmith.xyz slash articles, this is where I have like long form, like essays and kind of, okay, well, I guess my internet isn't working. Let me go ahead and XYZ slash uh, updates. Okay. So in the article pages, this is where I keep, it's basically a subdirectory in content. And this is where I keep long form essays. And that's in contraposition to the updates folder where I keep kind of, oh, here's what I'm doing this week. Oh, I'm going to do a live stream. I'm going to be doing this, you know, stuff like that. I feel like they're separate. So I keep them in separate folders. Of course, they're also tagged differently as well. Um, you know, I also put, you know, I tag all of these with the updates tag, everything here, you know, they'll have different tags or whatever. But um, those are the kind of things you can do with Hugo. So now that we understand, uh, you know, managing a Hugo site is mostly just, you know, creating, creating markdown files. And of course, linking things as well. I should be clear. I'm assuming that you know how markdown works, but um, just to be clear about how links work, um, if I want to link, so this page is called about, suppose I want to link to it from this new blog post. If I want to link there, you know, see my about page. You just use a normal markdown link uh, where this is going to be the text and the stuff in the parentheses is what it links to. Uh, you are going to want to say uh, slash about. It's slash because it's just in the bare content directory. If it were in like content articles, it would be slash articles. Um, and notice you don't include .md, you just include about. All right. So now let's go in here and I, I move some stuff around here. So I'll go here and you can say click on the about page and bam, it goes to the about page, okay? Um, so yeah, this, when, when you want to link things, um, yeah, just be sure, just remember that like to put the slash at the beginning, that's just a good form if they're in the root directory. Uh, let's actually include an image, why not? So I'm gonna take a picture, I'm gonna take a picture of the screen right now. So I've taken a picture with my screen uh, command, where, where, what directory are, am I even in here? So, oh, okay, yeah. So new site. Um, and then, as I said, we can put pictures in static. So I'm going to move this picture here. I'm going to call it pic.png. Okay. So now in this new blog, or let's, we have about pulled up over here. So I'll put it here. So if we want to include an image, so I can say, uh, I can just use normal markdown syntax for that. So this is like the alt text. So my image. And then uh, we can say uh, pic.png. That's what I named it. I'm pretty sure. And then look at that, there's my picture that I just took. Um, that's how it appears. And just notice again, remember, it's in the, the file is in the static directory. It's in the static directory in Hugo. Uh, but when Hugo compiles everything, it takes the static stuff and it takes the, co the content stuff and it puts it all in the root directory. So just to be clear, you if you wanna refer to something in static, you don't say static pick. Okay, that'll be an error. That's like, I don't see that. You say pick. All right, that, that's just a clarification. Okay, I'm going to interject a little something from the future that I forgot to mention. It's, it, I don't know, it's a little obvious, but I forgot to, to say it. Um, you can add content to your index file or any, like the index of any subdirectory you make um, by creating a file in the content directory that is underscore index.md. Okay, so I can add, I am adding stuff to my home page right now. Okay, so I can save that. Actually, I should probably not be stupid and actually put a title here. <laughs> title, uh, my home page. Okay. So this is, the, this is where basically you put the individual content for any kind of list file. So I, I kind of ignored the whole thing about, I, I talked about lists and singles, 
But I forgot to mention that, yeah, to, to like change any of these index files, to change your main page, you just edit underscore index. Or if you make some subdirectory where you have like articles or whatever, um, in there, if you go to articles, actually, I don't know if Hugo's going to generate a file for that already. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it does um, unless you, yeah, maybe it doesn't. But hypothetically speaking, if you have an article subdirectory that has like other um, files in there as well that it would list out, you could also include an underscore index file to add specific content. So that is how, I mean, in my website, right? So um, this is what I have in my articles page. So like all this stuff here, this is like additionally added in the content. Um, it's not nat naturally part of the list. Um, and I could add in other things if I wanted like other, yeah, whatever. That's all I have to say. That, that's just a clarification. Okay, so now we got that. That's all the, the basic stuff. Let's talk about how Hugo actually does this magic. Like, how does it generate all this stuff? How does it create all these tag pages? And how do I get these, like, next and previous things? And, like, all you know, all this kind of stuff. Let's talk about how that's done. Um, and then you can work on styling it and making it fancy and, and stuff like that. So let's, uh, so here again, here's our, our Hugo directory. I am actually going to go into the theme that we created. Uh, and you'll see our theme directory, we have archetypes, layouts, and static, which are also are present in our main uh, repository. Um, and just to be clear, just in case I, I, I didn't say this earlier in the video, when you have a theme, your website is going to look for the theme for the default files. But if your website, for example, you know, these files that we're going to look at just now, oh, layouts, you know, default list. Okay, if you create one of these in your own websites directory in the same place, it will overwrite this file. But if there's no file like that, it just looks at whatever the theme is doing. Okay, so one important thing to understand about Hugo is that there are two, if, now notice where I am, I'm in the, um, the theme here, and I went to layouts. This is the new directory we're gonna learn about. And in layouts, the probably most fundamental one is the underscore default. Now, um, in Hugo, you see there's a uh, list file and there's a single file. And that's because there are two different types of pages in Hugo. There are singles and there are lists. So an example of a single is, you know, my about page. All the pages that I just made, the about page, the little blog post, all of those, all that stuff that just goes, most of it just goes into content. Those are single pages, okay? So it just has some stuff and it has some content, blah, 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 right? That is against, you know, as opposed to that, we can look at, for example, this tag page at tags updates, which is automatically generated by Hugo. This is a list page. Now we can actually include other content in here as well, uh, but by default, it is just a list of all of the stuff that's at that location, or not really at that location. In this case, it's like, you know, whatever is marked with this tag. Or if we go to our home page, our home page technically is a list. So our home page by default is a list, and so are the tags, uh, and whereas all the other posts, they are singles. So that's what these two files are. They are basically the, um, let's, let's look at, yeah, we'll, we'll move this to the other, uh, other workspace. These are basically the um, templates for what lists and singles look like. Now, if we look at the single one, it's very simple. Basically, we just say, we, we see some Hugo commands here, and we'll explain all of these. Um, partial, what partial is doing is calling a file that I have created in another directory. It's a, a partial in the partial directory called header. And the reason I do that, and I do that in the single and in the list template is because really I want the header in both of those files to be exactly the same. I don't want to have to rewrite it twice. Or if I make a, ch if I want to make a change to the header, I don't want to have to modify these two files. So instead I call this header file and I'll, we'll look at that in just a second. Same thing with footer. And notice also that there's this content command and, you know, for any, I'll go ahead and pull this up on a, on a, let's see, Hugo, uh, variables. So Hugo, when you're looping through, when you're acting on a page or something else, you will have, um, uh, like different variables that you have for each of those things. So for example, pages, they have all this kind of stuff. So dot content, what that is going to do is it's going to take all the stuff that you put in markdown and it's going to print all of that in there or dot title is going to print the title. That's what these are. This is very simple, very intuitive. Okay. 
So that's all this is doing. It's just calling a header and footer, and it's put, you know, has some HTML in here. Most of it is in the header or footer, um, but it's calling this content. Now, more complicated is, is the list template. Let's look at what this is doing. Okay, there's some other stuff going on here, and just, just for, let's actually bring back, let's bring back this so we know what's going on here. Um, now, what this is doing, we're calling the header, we're calling the footer, which again we'll look at in a second, and we're calling content. Um, but importantly, we have this list here. We have this thing in Hugo uh, called a range. It's kind of like a for loop, where in this case, we are looping through all of the pages uh, that we've created. And for each of those pages, we are outputting this text here. And if you look very carefully, let me uh, get rid of uh, transparency here. If you look here, you will see that, oh, well, you know, we set a date, we put that, you know, date format command, we put in the title, uh, we put in a link. Basically what this generates is it generates this stuff here. So for every article here, uh, for every post, we have a list entry, right? And if we change this template, it will change that. Let's, uh, let's do that, okay? Let's do some cool stuff. Um, so let's say we, uh, I, I think it's kind of garish having these uh, dates. Let's say we get rid of them. So I'm just gonna get rid of all the stuff that like looks to get the date, you know, all proper HTML and also the dash that comes after it. So if I save that, you'll see that, oh, we still have our posts and they're still even ordered by the, the date. You, you can not actually do the for loop in different ways. I think by default, it's by the date. Um, but now we just have, you know, a link to the article, nothing else. So that's cool. Maybe you like that. Maybe that's nicer, nice and cleaner. But there are other things you can do as well. I mean, one example, one really cool example that I think is useful is a summary. Okay. Suppose on your main page, what you want is not just like a link to an article, but maybe the first segment of that. Well, that is what the summary uh, variable does. So what we can do here is we can go in here in our list item. I'm just gonna, we're, this is gonna be ugly looking, but it's gonna be magical nonetheless, because you're gonna see what you can do in, in Hugo. You can just give this summary variable, save that, and you'll see what happens is it's actually printed the stuff from these articles. What it's done, now in, in this case, we have very short articles, so it basically prints the whole thing. But if we had a longer article, it truncates that for, first portion of it. And it prints that there. So what you can do is, you know, if you want to have, let's say on your main page for your blog, you just want your most recent, you know, 10 blog posts with a summary, you can do that. And then you can have a little click more. You could go in here right now and say like click more or click for more or something like that. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that you can do. Um, all right. So that, uh, let's see. Uh, I want to say there's, is there something else I wanted to say in here? Um, the only other thing in this directory is the RSS. So RSS is, this is literally just the template for the RSS feed we have for the site. And it actually uses this range thing as well. It loops through all of the pages you see. And for each one, it creates, you know, an entry for that, taking the title and the permalink, all of these variables that um, each entry is going to have, right? So that is, that's your first look at how you can script things in Hugo. But I want to show you a little bit more. Um, let me move this to another workspace here. Uh, so we've looked at default and this is what, uh, you know, all your, all your, I don't know, um, I, I've already explained it, right? So you, there are singles, there are lists, those are the templates for them. Now suppose you don't like um, the main page, and this is actually what I do on my websites. I don't really want, I don't like lists like this on my main page. I kind of want to customize my main page. So one thing you can do is you can go into single here, and I'm going to copy it to the main layouts file, and I'm going to rename it uh, index.html. And what that is going to do is that is just, it, it's just going to use, basically, I mean, we've taken the single thing. Oh, well, I'll, oh, okay, maybe I should explain that. If you have in the layouts directory an index HTML file, that is going to take precedence. Uh, instead of using the list uh, format for your index, it's going to use whatever you put here. So if you don't like your index to be a list, you can put a file here and customize it. You could link it to the, the single list or whatever, and that's going to change your main page. Although it doesn't change, it doesn't change your tags. So your tags still have a list of everything. Oh, I forgot to undelete the uh, date here. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Uh, either way, so that, that's how that works. Let me talk about some of the other stuff. Let me, uh, I'm actually going to get rid of this because I think it's more helpful to not have this 
and to have these uh, entries for the, um, the tutorial. So let's talk about the other things, the other little flourishes I have. Now, as I said, um, we have two little things at the bottom here, in addition to our little footer down here that has a website name and whatever. Uh, you have a list of all the tags, and you also have these little things that say previous and next, right? So you can go to the previous blog entry in time or the next blog entry in time. So how are those done? Now, those are actually in the partials section, and I alluded to the partial thing before because we call this header and footer file. Let's go ahead and look at the header and footer files. So in the header, this is the stuff, remember that both the list template and the single template call. And it has basically your sensible defaults, you know, the kind of stuff that basically every HTML page is gonna have with the added benefit of you being able to script some things in it. So for example, if a page has tags, you can say, okay, check to see if tags are set. If there are tags set, add this line in that uses the tags and deliminate, del deliminates them. Uh, by uh, commas, um, but if you don't, you know, if this doesn't apply, if you don't have tags, this line just won't exist, okay? Same thing for the fav icon. You can set a fav icon variable in the config file, um, but if you don't, it's not gonna include this line. Um, so this is what a partial looks like, and you can also have scriptability here. So this thing here, the, the title, so if you notice the titles, let's go, uh, let's go here. So. In the about page, you'll see that the title is about and then a bar and then the website name. Okay, but if you go to the main website, you will see that it's just my website, just the website name. Um, so that is because, well, it sets the title equal to the site website, but if the, the uh, title is also not home, it adds in the specific page uh, name with the bar in between and stuff like that. Uh, you, you can look at and figure it out if it's not obvious. Uh, how this is working, but uh, and see, we can also have other variables like the site language and stuff like that. All right, so that's our header. Now, our footer contains other basic stuff at the bottom, but importantly, you can also call on other partial things, and that is what the two things I mentioned a second ago, these, uh, you know, next and previous and the list of tags are. So if you look at the next and previous, next prev file, this is a good example of the kind of stuff that you can add to a Hugo site. So in this case, um, and again, I'm, I'm not telling you how to script all this. We're not doing this yet. I'm just like kind of piquing your interest, showing you like how you can do things. But in Hugo, there are some functions, some page functions called, if you look over here, um, well, we'll just search for it, called next and previous, which will sort by, which will give you the next page uh, in, in, as if they were ordered. So for example, uh, what this thing does is says, okay, if we have a next or previous page, we're going to create this div and inside of it, you're going to have a link to the previous article and or a link to the next article, right? That's all this does. Now, if you're on a page that doesn't have either one of these, like on the main page, it doesn't print out anything. That's what the if statements are for. Um, but uh, in all these other pages, you do have like the previous and the next uh, link. And of course on this one, it doesn't have a previous because it's most early, it only has a next. And on this one, it's the most recent, so it doesn't have a next, you know? So that, that is all that does. And that is just, you know, this little file, just this little file, that's all it is. Um, and of course you can style it to your own specifications. You know, I've already given the, them IDs that you can style, right? Um, and at the same time, you have this thing called tag list. And that is the thing at the bottom that lists the tags here. Let's actually give it some more, let's give one of these more tags just for diversity's sake. Um, so we'll go to content um, autobiography, okay? So we'll name that personal, uh, lol, I don't know, random. Okay, so we've tagged it some random stuff. And all of these tags appear here because of what this script does. It says, okay, if there are any tags set here, um, it is going to loop through them with range and it is going to print out for each one of them. It's gonna print that stuff out. And also you'll note that it adds it adds a dot between all of them. Uh, that's what all this other stuff is for. It, tech, it checks to see if like, you know, they're, uh, it's if it's at the end, if it's at the last one or whatever. So it's a little more complicated just because you include that. But either way, like, 
this is the kind of stuff that you can do pretty easily. So the end, let's think about what the end result of this is. Um, you have a static site, which is gonna load basically instantaneously on a, a client site or your own site. Um, and you can have a lot of features. You can have uh, next or previous articles, related tags. You can have suggested articles. You can have random articles. You can have all this kind of stuff generated. Um, and it's, it, it's just simple. It's just simple, you know? There's so much less headache in it, right? But as a review, okay, so you can go, you can go here. At this point, you should kind of understand what's going on uh, in this layouts uh, directory. So we know what the partials are. That's like the header or the footer or the, the other things we just talked about, right? So those are things um, really, so there are also two directories here. There's partials and short codes. And we'll talk about short codes in another video, but I will just say they're very similar to partials. It's just really you call partials and templates and short codes, which work similarly, you call them in files. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll show you how one works. I'll show you how one works. Why not? We're, we're doing a video already. I mean, so uh, let's see. So I have one here called image. Okay. And we can look at how this looks. Um, so one thing you'll be doing in websites a lot is uh, putting in images. And sometimes, you know, you want an image to have a caption. But to do that in HTML, you got to put it in a figure and then add a fig caption. Sometimes you want the, the image to be linked or have, you know, all this other stuff. It's kind of hard to put that in. So what this, what this shortcut does is it basically automatically does a bunch of stuff for you. Okay, so let's actually take, I'm going to take, um, let's go back to, what was that page we put up? Uh, image in already. I guess it was this one. Okay, so we can use Markdown to include uh, a normal Markdown image, image, but we can do this in a different way. We can say um, basically this. We can say IMG, and then we're going to say source. Uh, this particular thing, it takes uh, a couple of different, I want to say, so, or I didn't list source here, but source is the image it takes, which is going to be in, uh, where was it? Uh, pick uh, PNG. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and close that off. That's how you make a short code look. Uh, let's go to the about page. All right, so you see that here, but we can also add in stuff like captions and stuff. So we can say caption. This is a caption. All right, because this short code can process arguments like this. So now it has a caption at the bottom. And of course, you can style this in CSS to be in the center or something, which is a pretty sensible thing to do. And we can also, you know, put a link on it. So let's say I want the link to be to my own website. Okay, so we can do that. I'm pretty sure link is the right thing, yeah. So if I click on this, it is gonna pull up my, wow, look at that. Um, and other things as well, I think even this sh short code has, um, you can set a title thing, which is really, that's, it, it, I think you give it to it as mouse. So this is um, what appears if you mouse over the image, okay? So if I mouse over it, you will see, oh look, this is what appears when you mouse over the image, right? So short codes are a way of kind of economizing, like instead of having to write out, um, where is it? I thought I had it pulled up just a second ago. Yeah, over here. Instead of having to write out figure, blah, 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 and deal with all these variables, uh, you can kind of make a template and plug in arguments that you receive uh, and this is like, I do this for a lot of other stuff, like on my website, um, library. So I have a page where I list out all the books I own. And um, like these entries are actually created using a kind of short code that also like automatically links to certain things. Like if I have a podcast episode on it um, and they actually on the back end, they actually store other information like the... Um, I don't know if you can see it here. Okay, yeah, you can see the Library of Congress stuff. Anyway, I'm going on now. Um, you should have an idea how Hugo works. That's the important thing, or at least how to modify it. Remember, there are just two types of, of, of pages. There are singles and there are lists. You can modify them in the layouts um, over here. You can easily, whoops, you can add in, you can uh, basically abbreviate your code writing by making partials and short codes and all that kind of stuff. And then when you're all done, you can of course compile uh, just by running Hugo, and that is going to compile to the public directory and you can upload that to your website or whatever. So um, honestly, that's about it for this video. In the next one, I want to actually take you through tangible examples. I showed you how some of these things work, 
Like how, oh, how, you know, how do you get, um, uh, how do you get a nav bar working? How do you, like, script in some other stuff? You know, I've shown you that I have some partials that do stuff like this. But I think in the next video, I'll, I'll give you a tangible example of us making one together, okay? Uh, and then we'll talk about other stuff about Hugo. So hopefully this has given you, yeah, I don't know, something. <laughs> Just get into it. it. It's awesome. It'll save you some time. It's uh, very easy once you get set up, and you should be able to set yourself up at this point. All right, see you guys next time.